One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Coming at you from New Jersey, the capital of misery, and the place where metal forgot to die. Uh, this is the Hero Eyes Metal podcast. I was hoping you'd sing it too, but. No. <laughs> and we are back with another mystery CD box. Uh, we, we received a donation of uh, two large boxes full of CDs. This is the second box? From a collection of 90 CDs. And we've just been going through them. We have not, you know, reviewed the boxes at all. And also tallying, you know, their median uh, sell price on Discogs and seeing, you know, what we got here. You know, maybe on a rainy day, we will callously sell all of Maledictus's friends' ancient CDs. And show him <laughs> how much money he lost. Um, so, folks, this is our second box, uh, second and last box. So we're getting through this, right? Yeah. Uh, we have a lot more CDs. This box is very full, though, so this will be a few episodes worth of CDs here. Um, so yeah, and, and like I said, folks, these, we're going into these things blind. There is no, we're, we're, we're not researching here as we go. We're going to research afterwards, obviously find out a little bit more about some of the CDs we don't know. But what they're worth. They're just getting thrown at me. And, and you know, we're seeing if we both remember what they were or if we were familiar with them. Some of them were Any not. Any comments? Some of them were going to be like, I don't know what the fuck this is. And we're going to have to look it up. All right. So let's so do it. Setting the timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Only we only get 20 minutes or this thing will go Bam. on forever. Now we're going. 20 minutes. The clock is running, folks. Let's okay. go. Okay. And we're starting it off. And it's, what do you know? It's Iron More Maiden. More Iron Maiden. More Iron Maiden. I get the sense this guy liked Iron he Maiden. He sure liked Iron Maiden. This time it's Somewhere in Time. Yeah, but was that one of the later albums? Yeah, it looks, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't As know. we've said on prior episodes, neither of us are huge Maiden heads. I like the hits. I'm going to be honest. I like the hits. Everyone I don't like the, the deep cuts of Iron Maiden. This seems so like I don't a deep cut album. spend a lot of time listening to their albums. What, what's the song? But on that I album? love the hits. I lo- I, well, I listen to some Paul Diano albums. But, okay. Those are kind of hits. And I listen to Power Slave, and that's it. I feel like Paul uh, Diano are kind of hits, though. Like yeah, Killers are but, kind of hits. Uh, we, got, we got Wasted Years on here. Well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a kind of a hit. Everyone knows that. Oh, that's one. definitely a hit. Mm hmm. Stranger in a Strange Land. I know that song. Yeah, there you go. I might know Caught Somewhere in Time. Somewhere, yeah. But the other songs, I'm not sure. It's more of a deep album. Later. Looks like they're more... Where do you think they're caught? Where are they? Uh, This is the future, obviously. It's some sort of dystopian... Cyber Eddie on the front. It's it's some sort of dystopian future. And yeah, you got Cyber Eddie, right? And and this is, you know, there's always a version of Eddie depending what the theme of the album is. Uh, This is like a futuristic kind of cybernetic Eddie. And they're they're in some kind of cyberpunk world. Right? So that's, that was cool back then. Pretty neat. Oh, yeah. And up. more Iron Maiden. More, more Iron Maiden. Number of the Beasts. Uh, okay, so that's a that's a that's a popular one. Now that's that's a popular album. That's probably their biggest album. Am I right? Can I can I say that? Or is, you know, got run, it's got Run to the Hills. Yeah, I on think it. that's their biggest album. I'm gonna say I'm familiar with that song. Front, that's, I think it's got a lot of hits. What are some of the other songs on, on that album? Uh, Invaders. Uh, that's Children of the Damned. Mm-hmm. Hallowed be Thy Name. Yeah, that's good. Number of the Beasts. <laughs> Twenty Two Acacia Avenue. Yeah, I mean, those are kind of you know. I like the back. Yeah, it's got the end. But like, <laughs> yeah, but. That's the thing, because like a lot of these, I've never bought these albums, so I've never seen the, the back. Art, the artwork that was actually I've seen on this them. a lot of times. I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah, Iron Maiden albums are always kind of fun. Something to think about. They're, they're always, I mean, right, you have like, you know, this devil guy. And, and you know, and there's, you know, and you have like that Run to the Hill single where like, you know, the devil's like fighting the guy with the tomahawk. You know, they have this sort of funny looking comical devil guy uh thin lizzy the f- uh second thin lizzy album the second thin lizzy probably thin lizzy's least known album it's not it's not the best it's folky uh shades of blue orphanage um obviously they kind of i think they kind of yeah i'm not sure if i know any songs on this yeah you probably don't what do you know um let, let's i'm, I'm more what's familiar a, what's a banger no, none of these are like. This is probably like everyone's least favorite Thin Lizzy album. Well, we have it, folks. Yeah, this is a, a Thin Lizzy album that no one probably knows. Deep tracks, but they're deep for a reason. They're not that good. I mean, their first album is actually better than this, and their first album is really kind of very raw. You know, it's not very different from their their more rock stuff. But yeah, and obviously you have you have them like kind of their faces photoshopped onto, or not photoshopped, but you know whatever they used to do back then onto like orphans. That's not, obviously they didn't know each other when they were little kids. But. They didn't grow up in the same. They did not. Age. I don't believe they did. Uh, oh, that's the front. Oh yeah, everyone. Uh, yeah. Last warning. Um, my my band covered that song once. Last warning. 
Uh, Which band? Uh, uh, well, that was Holy Enema. Uh, we, we did, or, or was the other band after that? It was probably the other band after that. This is also upside down. Yeah, it's all over the place. But I'm having I th- a hard time I'm over here. I'm thinking, is that a compilation? Because there's so many songs on there. So I don't know if that is a regular album because there's like it looks like there's like 50 songs on there. There's definitely some bonus tracks. Like yeah. we have some live tracks on the bottom. Yeah, so I think this may be some sort of re-release or something. But um, there's, I believe there's a song on there. This is from 1993. Yeah, I believe there's a song on there written by Peter Steele. I believe it's called um, "Public Assistance." You know how Peter, you know, was about those things. There's a like an article. Oh look at that! I can't even read that. Oh my God, Jesus! I will now read this entire they, thing. They, we're now yes, everyone for the edification of everybody. So get something to eat, New folks. York hardcore. We're going to learn about it. Okay, here we go. I'm not reading this. Yeah, no, 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 we're not going to do that to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're very proud of what somebody, you know, the write-up they got. Obviously, Gnostic Front. I guess they're, uh, are they still doing stuff today? I think they are. Uh, another Thin Lizzy album. That's somewhat more well-known. Biggest than... album, I would say. Um, that's known for their one hit. Their one hit wonders are all on that album, I guess. Um... You know, even though there's so much more than those songs, uh, obviously you know that album, the, the Jailbreak song. Um, the Boys Are Back in Town. The Boys Are Back in Town. You know, that's probably the two big songs. For that, but all good songs. Um, probably like, you know, of their, you know, albums or more rock albums, that's probably like my least favorite one. Not not that it's bad. It's just they have so much better stuff that wasn't popular. So. You just said deep cuts are deep for a reason. Yeah, but on the Shades of Blue Orphan album, but like the deep cuts on their more rock albums are. Okay. You know what I mean? Very different than Lizzie. Very different. It's a completely different band by that point. You know? Uh, you're right, Heap. Salisbury. The Salisbury album. Is that an alternative cover? Yeah, of I was going to say. I've... Salisbury has a tank on it, I believe. I believe it has like a tank, right? So that is some weird alternative cover. Some import, maybe? I'm like, that's not Salisbury. So anyway, I'm not too familiar with Salisbury though. I'm not. I'm very not confused favorite. by this. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that album, but it looks almost looks like a metal album. Right? Looks like it should be like a black metal I'm album gonna, or I'm something. Gonna look up the Salisbury I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's let's find out. This looks like some kind of like black metal album, right? It is Uriah Heap though, as far as we know. It's just some weird pressing of Salisbury. The album I know. Mm-hmm. Has like a tank it has on a it. tank on it, and the first song is called "Bird of Prey," okay. and I love that song. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is um. What is this? I don't know what this is. What is this? Explain. We're gonna look um, it up. We're gonna look up what that is. Like okay, this is an ex- okay. Well, I guess I know an expanded version of Salisbury. Mm-hmm. So High Priestess is the first song on this, but it's okay. like the fifth song on Spotify. <laughs> Some weird repressing. We'll find out, though. We're obviously, we're going to discog these things to find out what the hell they are. Bird of Prey is not even on this. All right. I really like that song. So, yeah, it's some weird pressing. You know, that's why there's discogs. We find out I what mean, these things are. I mean, maybe this is the original version. Um, Maybe, but I always thought the tank was. I'm, you know, but it looks kind of a little bit morbid for that, something that would be a made back then. I don't know. I'm thinking that's some sort of... Uh, I mean, it looks like some sort of creature from, like, Stranger Things or something. But we'll have to do some research on that we'll one. We'll find out. That's what why we're here. That is. We find out so you don't have Very to. Very upset. No bird of prey. Oh, look at that. Look what that is. Uh, Suicidal Tendencies is... Uh, that is more, one of their more, like, mid to late 80s albums. How would I live tomorrow? That was totally WSOU music, that album. Um, yeah, that's not, like, their earlier stuff, but... This it's more of their thrashy like this stuff. This was also purchased used for yeah. five ninety nine. We'll find out how much it is today. Be a discogs. How will I laugh tomorrow? I'm yep. not a big. Uh, that was a big hit. That suicidal, was, you yeah. know. That that was more thrashy stuff. The less, less I, just, I know about Pepsi's. Thrashy. I don't know about much else when yeah, it comes so this to is, suicidal. This is after that, you know. Like the How this I Live Tomorrow. Real heads. Well, yeah. The real heads. The, the, the How I Live Tomorrow. It's almost like a ballad. Almost. It's almost like. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't my favorite. They got a little too like technical. Interesting. Yeah. What is that? Caius. Oh, it's a Caius album. Look at that. So this album's called "And the Circus Leaves Town." Okay. And we've got a little. It says for promotional use only. Sale or other transfer so is prohibited. Radio, radio copy. 
So we got a special oh, version. Is this? This might be mine, actually. Ooh. Because I was given a Caius album once. My brother used to work at the Rutgers radio station, and he gave me a demo copy, like a, a radio copy of. Uh, this might be. Let me just check. No, I don't think so. That was a different one. It, I, I did. I do remember getting like a promotional copy once from a radio station, and but it wasn't this one. So interesting that he also. So we can't resell one. that one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it because it says back then you can't sell it. Um, yep. Yeah, so you know all the all the guys guys there. They would go on to be in other bands. Look at young Brant Bjork over there. Looks like a normal guy. Um, what is that? I can't read your weird black metal writing. Well, I can see it's on Peaceville. Futurist. I'm not sure what else that it could be, though. Oh, it's My Dying Bride. Uh oh. <laughs> not familiar Next. with the local. Next. My dying is that like a doom? Yeah, they were They're like, like doom, doomy right? black metal, right? Like from England, right? I've never. I don't they think I've England? ever listened to them. I've heard of them. What, were they from England or from? No, I'm, I'm no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm why getting, are you asking me? <laughs> no, I'm getting them because I'm getting them mixed up with uh, Cradle of Filth. That's why, which is really stupid. They are from England. They, I know that. Yeah, they are, and I, which <laughs> is a really stupid thing to do because I don't like doing anything like Cradle of Filth. But I don't know. I, don't, did, I know my dying bride is a respected band yeah, that yeah, I have so. never listened to. Yeah, that so. was definitely music of back then that was popular with the vendor, for sure. What? Is, oh, Cathedral. That's a good album. Cathedral Soul Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's a single, I think. I think that's an EP. I feel like it's an EP. It only has four songs. Yeah, there's, there's the EP. It's a single for Soul it's Sacrifice. five beautiful portraits. Yeah, of these guys. These doomy-looking dudes. Uh, Lee Dorian and all that. Um, yeah, I remember Soul Sacrifice actually had a video, I think, on Headbangers Ball. Soul Sacrifice, I'll sacrifice my soul to you. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, that was a, kind of the popular, that was kind of like the popular. That, that I was, love Lee Dorian. That, yeah, Lee Dorian's a funny, you know, just a silly guy, right? Yeah, he had a lot of funk to him. Like, he would, like, always kind of really extenuate his voice, you know. He, he always kind of try to be kind of almost like a, like a soul singer almost, you know. This is from 1992. Mm -hmm. Came out on Earache. Earache Records. Back then, the Earache label did all that stuff back then. Remember Earache from back then? It was a cool label in England. Uh, whoa. What, a mock? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. A mock time. Kirk must fight Spock. What is this say? I don't know. Sentenced. Sentence. I don't know anything about that album. Uh, with their album A Mock. A Mock. <laughs> it's from 1995 and came out on Century Media. <laughs> sounds, like a, do, sounds like a Century Media band. Figured, we're going to do a quick look up of these guys. Okay, yeah, we have time. Sounds like it be from Century Media. Just so we can give a little bit of context. Sentenced. I mean, that sounds familiar, but it's also very generic. I'm going to guess that this is like gothy doom. That's my guess. We'll see what it really is. It's death metal. Okay. Doesn't look, from I'm Finland. Not, okay. I'm not looking. I'm not seeing death metal here, but. This is an of the time original Finnish death metal band. Okay. Which Finnish death metal can mean almost anything. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to what that is. Yeah, they do weird things. The the Finns. They, can, they do what they want. They do. They were another. They're another world. They speak a different language. Uh, Neil Diamond. Just Neil Diamond classics. Right. What's on that thing's probably like a dollar, right? So many Neil Diamond albums. It's the yeah, Neil Diamond classics. Kentucky woman. Ba -ba 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 -ba. She wants to it's know got a you. Sticker on it that says the nice price. It's probably a dollar. So, yes, Neil. Neil Diamond. This Neil, is we had. This is our second Neil Diamond we've encountered. Yeah, there's, there's going to be Neil. Di I told you there's going to be Neil Diamond in there because uh, <laughs> the vendor had a thing for Neil Diamond. I'm not familiar with Neil. Oh wait, girl, you'll be a woman soon. Uh, I know that song. Well, the first track in Kentucky Woman from yeah. some Quentin Tarantino sure. film. Sure, uh, like a lot of people use them in soundtracks. They're, they're just kind of whimsical kind of songs that people like to put in movie soundtracks. Uh, I mean, those are all pop all of his songs are popular. Which one isn't? Like this, this guy doesn't have a deep track, does he? You know, they're all they're all popular. I'm familiar with, with them. Someday I'll go on my yeah. Neil Diamond face. Yeah, 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 Kentucky Woman, Cherry Cherry, Solitary Man. Yeah, those are all, I know, these songs. Sure. Yeah. 
I don't know these songs. I'm a believer, you know, the one that the monkeys cover. Yeah. What is uh, Amer- Dead Can Dance? Oh, that's goth, I think. Sometimes you'll find an occasional goth. And actually, I believe it is goth, goth. Goth album, Dead Dead Can Dance. I'm not familiar what song they made, but they had they had kind of a goth hit out there. Yeah, I'm not gonna know anything on this, but yeah. I mean, if you, if I heard that, I'd probably go. That's it's from 1984. Mm-hmm. Real goth, authentic. From the time of Warner Brothers Records, it was pretty big then. They were pretty major labels. Yeah, uh, you know, I bet you. I've in, heard of Dead Can Dance in, in 1984. So. I'm if sure. I've heard of the Goss band, that means they were pretty big. Uh, I don't know what the hit was, but there was definitely like a. I mean, obviously the big labels were scooping all the Goth bands up in the early 80s, so it was cool to be Goth. What is that? Is it your little? What does that say? Natas. That's Satan backwards, folks. Uh, were these guys like a stoner band? I'm getting a stoner vibe. I think they were a stoner, but I think they're still playing today. Uh, we'll do some research on that, but Natas. Natas. Satan. 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 Yes, it's Satan backwards. Satan. Ciudad de Brahman. That sounds like some like Buddhist we're like, stuff. We're like, we're, we're combining Spanish and Indian themes. Like, yeah, some strange new world kind of. I don't know. These stoners do weird things sometimes. They do a lot of drugs and they end up doing weird things. Ah, uh, Thin Lizzy's first album. So you were you've already been discussing this. Mm-hmm. That's a good album. That's got some. That's got the song the the friendly, the friendly ranger of Clontarf Castle. And perhaps we should go to Clontarf Castle. I mean, I've never listened to much early Thin Lizzy. Oh, you should listen to that because I don't really like the bluesy stuff. Ah, uh, this isn't really bluesy. It's kind of folky, and uh, the songs are just you know they make you think. They make you think. It's good. Their first. What, what does it make you think about? Um, Ireland. I say their first rock album is probably their third album, uh, but this is, you know, this is better than their second album. I'll give you that. Some memorable numbers in there. My friends and I used to like to sing Camel. Uh, that was one of those, like, proggy kind of British bluesy bands. This is by the cigarette. Yeah. yeah they, they totally stole the logo from the cigarette. Were they allowed to do that? I don't know. I mean, you know, they're selling cigarettes to kids. These guys are so, making kids want to smoke as well. Yes, this is a compact compilation of Mirage, Moon Madness, The Snow Goose, and Rain Dances. I'm, I don't know if I'm too familiar with Campbell, and, and, I, and I think they're a different band from Sopwith Campbell. I don't know if they're the same band or they changed their name. I'm not sure about that. We'll find out, but there's some British... Look at this cover. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's, I think as a comp, so maybe that it wasn't the original artwork. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, that I might be a recent, recent artwork. I, I seem to recall them having kind of cool album covers. They always have the camel on there, you know, the one that they stole from the cigarette company. Totally ripped off. Uh, what, it, it's, it's, the band is called H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, I've heard of this band. It seems like a compilation, like a double or something. Uh, I have to listen to these guys. I've heard of them. Um, I imagine there's some kind of psychedelic prog kind of stuff. That's what I'm guessing. So it's H.P. Lovecraft 1 and 2. Okay. This was released in the year 2000. That's when it was released, so it's not... By Universal Music Special Markets. I'm thinking that's... Well, I'm thinking, a very special market. I'm thinking that's a reissue. I, I, I don't imagine that was released. Those originals were released. In the, no. Yeah. This is this a compilation. This is a compilation of probably this band-made two albums or whatever, like kind of a one-shot deal. And uh, I imagine their songs are Lovecraftian. I imagine they're about H.P. Lovecraft stories. I'd have to. Uh. What the? Oh, Captain Beefheart. That looks like Captain Beefheart, and he's stuck in a vagina. That's what that is, folks. That's what you see there? Come on. They're, they're being birthed. It's just a fisheye lens. They're being birthed. Through the, the thing. Is that, do you see that with all fisheye lenses? No, just that particular thing I think is well known. It's, it's, what do you see of, in this the, picture? Uh, there's like a taxi cab and uh, yeah, there's a taxi cab <laughs> looking at them through a taxi cab, what a taxi cab sees. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've seen the, this album cover before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a popular As one. As I've mentioned already, I'm not too familiar with Captain Beefheart. You should listen to him for fun. 1999, also on Buddha Records. But reissued probably then. Imagine the albums from the 70s, I think. Mm-hmm. 60s or 70s. But fun music, I think. Uh, it's kind of a little bit whimsical. Psychedelic. Very dirty, bluesy kind of stuff. You know, and he's known for his voice. He kind of thinks like this. 
that's amazing. Uh, what, uh, what is that? Okay, this is a little bit confusing. Oh, electric wizard. Because on this side, um, we have electric wizard, wizard. I think it's a split. On this side. Oh, it's the famous orange goblin electric wizard split. There's a famous split. Yes, I've heard of this. Uh, I'm, I'm not an orange goblin fan. I think we went over that because we, we okay, yes. found the orange goblin album. Yes, uh, we do like electric wizard more than orange goblin. This yeah. is why I do not like split. They're on man's ruin. So why do you say this is famous? Uh, I've heard of it. The split. <laughs> You've heard I've of it. I've probably seen it on Discogs before just looking through Electric Wizard albums. Um, I probably ran into it like listening to them online or something. And we will right now just, display the price is, here. This might be worth, yeah, this might be, this potentially might be worth. Or we'll, here. We'll find Or here. It's going to be up. It's going to be up. <laughs> Wait, let me mirror view here. <laughs> no, here. You should put the price everywhere I'm, we point it I'm to. like the weatherman when he's trying to figure, here. There, where my uh, hand is. Get, get your meat out of there. My meat is in the thing. <laughs> uh, what is, uh, let's see, make sure we focus. Uh, War, War Horse, uh, not the War Horse um, that we've, was that being called War Horse? I think this is the front. That's a different War Horse. How this, many War Horses are there? This is there? an older War Horse, as you can see. That looks like an, you know, that looks like an old War Horse from the, the way back oldie time days. Because you can call your band War Horse. A lot of people just probably want to call their band War Horse. It's probably, if you went on, on Metal Archives, you'd probably find 100 War Horses. But that's some weird prog rock, I'll bet. I'm not familiar with anything of, of that. But By I the looks of it. I can't find a uh, year on this, but it says it's made in the EU. So it's not that old. I mean, you know, it reissued, probably reissued. I would imagine it was reissued when it was the EU. That does not look like a new album. That looks like something from the 70s. Um, I'm thinking it's some kind of prog rock from like okay, Belgium yes. or something. It says on the bottom here, it includes previously unreleased bonus tracks. Yeah. I bet they're from Belgium. It was released on Angel Air, where the artist has a voice. I should hope Exclamation so. Exclamation point. I should hope so. I right, probably have time for one or two one more. One or two more. What is that? Is that an I Hate God album? That's an I Hate God album. Uh, take as the never pain. That must be one of their earlier albums. Uh, what year is that? Might be their first or second album. Not familiar. That's back when they were good. That's when we first discovered them. We were like, "Wow, this is amazing." I believe there's an offensive song on this. There's one. always offensive songs. Um, there's like a, a racial song. Oh, is that? Oh, that's oh that one. Why don't you look at it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna read it for you, but I'm gonna. Uh, read you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. And 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 don't get me wrong; these guys are not anything like that. They just like to, you know, they were like edge lords back then. They're they're not that. Um, but uh, yeah. So this was, you know, this was back in the day. We were we were fascinated with this. The sound we never heard a sound like that. It was just like the most thunderous, fucking dirty sound, tuned down sound we ever heard. And as a result, I think you know my band at the time decided to like tune down to the key of fucking A because we heard this and we were like, oh my god. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, and that's it. That's it, folks. So um, there is a whole bunch more CDs in this box, and that's going to be like three or four more episodes of our stupid faces in your face talking about CDs. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about weird, C weird CDs that, that I hardly even know anything about. I think I'm allergic to the CDs. They're I'm dusty. Having an, no, no, yeah, 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 I'm they, having no, a no, reaction no. right I now. I should clean them off or something, like de-dust them or something, because they're, yeah, they are definitely covered in fucking years. They're making me sick. Yeah, they could definitely cause a reaction if you're allergic to dusty things. So, but that's what we we do it so you don't have to at the Here Lies Metal podcast. So you don't have to. We don't have series. to do this. Yeah, we have no content, so that's why we're doing this. We don't have because melodies won't come up with any original content, and. So All right. Thank you for watching. This. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I hopefully you enjoy this. We will time. now tabulate the entire haul of this and our cumulative total of the past four episodes we're at now. Yeah, we'll give you a, a what we're up to. And hopefully we're going to be able to retire once we get, you know, the millions of dollars that these are all worth. I think we'll have to share some of it with a donor. But like, no, you no. gave them to us. Nope, you gave them to no. us. Nope, you gave them to us. Yeah, we're still... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's easy to just sell CDs though. You can't just be like, all right. Cause if you dump them at the, at the music store, it's going to give you like a, like a fraction of the price, right? They don't even want them, right? They even, is, are, are they music stores? Like what music store is even going to buy these? You know, like some record store, like they're not going to want these fucking things. All right. Yeah. So anyway, 
Yeah, it's like having gold. Like, it's it's worth so much, but who's going to buy your gold, right? It's the same thing. Um, yeah. Well, when the apocalypse comes, these will be currency. Um, maybe, probably worth more than gold. Because what? Uh, let's think of this, folks, real quick. If the apocalypse comes, what is people like? Oh, gold. What will? How how will you actually sell gold? Like, how is gold actually going to be right. worth anything? This is going to be a tangent. Yeah. We're gonna you say, know what will be worth something? We're going to say good night. Bullets and seeds. Bottle cap. Bottle cap, and obviously bottle cap from the game. So, yeah. all right, folks, that's it. We'll bother you next time. Bye. <laughs>